Hello and welcome back to the Gospel Teachings of R.A.K. Today we are going to be talking about judgment. Is God going to judge the world? Romans chapter 14 verses 9 through 12. For to this end Christ died and rose again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. But you, why do you judge your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we shall all stand at the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, to me every knee shall bend, and every tongue shall give praise to God. Therefore, every one of us will render an account for himself to God. Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 and 10. I beheld till thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days sat. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like clean wool. His throne like flames of fire, the wheels of it like a burning fire. A swift stream of fire issued forth from before him. Thousands of thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times a hundred thousand stood before him. The judgment sat, and the books were opened. The book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 42 and 43. And he, speaking of Jesus, charged us to preach to the people and to testify that he it is who has been appointed by God to be judge of the living and of the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that through his name, all who believe in him may receive forgiveness of sins. Acts chapter 17, verse 31. Inasmuch as he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world with justice by a man whom he has appointed and whom he has guaranteed to all by reigning him from the dead. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1, I charge you in the sight of God and Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead by his coming and by his kingdom. The Revelation of John or Apocalypse chapter 11 verse 17 and 18. We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, who are and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun your reign. And the nations were angered, but your wrath came, and the time for the dead to be judged, and for giving the reward to your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, the small and the great, and for destroying those who corrupted the earth. Apocalypse chapter 20 verses 11 through 15 And I saw a great white throne, and the one who sat upon it, from his face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and scrolls were opened, and another scroll was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things that were written in the scrolls, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead that were in it. And and death and hell gave up the dead that were in them, and they were judged, each one, according to their works. And hell and death were cast into the pool of fire. This is the second death, the pool of fire. And if anyone was not found written in the book of life, he was cast into the pool of fire. What's the difference between judging, judgment, and sentencing? Judge, the definition, verb, to form an authoritative opinion or idea about any matter. Two, to hear and pass judgment on persons or cases in a court of law. Judgment, an opinion or decision given as guilty or innocent after judging or forming an opinion after listening to the evidence. Two, a misfortune looked on as a punishment from God. Three, a legal decision. Four, a sentence or order given by a judge or law of court. Five, in the Bible, justice or right. Six, the final judging of mankind by God. Sentence, the noun form. The uh, the determination or declaration by a court of the punishment of a convicted person. Also the punishment itself, as his sentence was one year in jail, as an example. Two, a decision, opinion, or judgment, as of a court. Uh, Sentence verb... Uh, to pronounce judgment or, vun- or um, I'm sorry, sentence, verb form, to pronounce judgment or punishment upon a convicted person as I sentence you to one year in jail. By what measure is God going to judge every human being? Ecclesiasticus chapter 16 verses 12 and 13. For mercy and wrath are with him. He is might to forgive and to pour out indignation. 
according as his mercy is, so his correction judges a man according to his works. John chapter 12, verse 48. He who rejects me and does not accept my words has one to condemn him. The word that I have spoken will condemn him on the last day. Romans chapter 2, verses 12, 13, and 16. For whoever have sinned without the law will perish without the law, and whoever have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not who hear the law that are just in the sight of God, but it is they who follow the law that will be justified. This will take place on the day when, according to my gospel, God will judge the hidden secrets of men through Jesus Christ. James chapter 1, verse 22 and 25. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. But he who has looked carefully into the perfect law of liberty, and has remained in it, not becoming a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, shall be blessed in his deed. James chapter 2, verses 12 through 14, 17, 20, 22, 24, and 26. So speak, and so act, as men about to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to him, who has not shown mercy, but mercy triumphs over judgment. What will it profit, my brethren? If a man says he has faith, but does not have works, can the faith save him? So faith too, unless it has works, is dead in itself. But do you want to know, O senseless man, that faith without works is useless? Do you see that faith? worked along with his works, and by the works the faith was made perfect. You see that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith also without works is dead. That's important. We have to remember, James makes it very clear here that it doesn't take only faith to enter the kingdom of heaven. It takes works to show your true faith, which is what God expects of us to enter that kingdom of heaven. Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find, do you think, faith on the earth? And that is talking about true faithfulness. True faithfulness through works. Number five. Just what is it that God is going to judge or decide about each of us? God is going to judge our faith. On what basis? Our works. Since we are justified or saved, Rewarded with eternal life by our faith, God must make a judgment as to whether we had faith or not. God is going to judge the quality of our faith by our works. What works? Whether we worked at keeping God's commands as prescribed in the law of Moses. What means does God use to punish sinners while they are still alive to lead them to repent of their sins? Genesis chapter 18 verse 25 and 26 Far be it from you to do this thing, and to slay the just with the wicked, and for the just to be in like case as the wicked. This is not beseeming you. You who judges all the earth will not make this judgment. And the Lord said to him, If I find in Sodom fifty just within the city, I will spare the whole place for their sake. And um, we have to remember that in Sodom, we did, God did not find anybody besides Lot and his family um, to save. And so that is why he did, he did destroy both Sodom and Gomorrah. Exodus chapter 7 verse 4, And he will not hear you, and I will lay my hand upon Egypt, and I will bring forth my army and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt, by very great judgments. Note, these are the judgments God used against Egypt. 1. God turns Egypt's rivers, streams, pools, and ponds of water into blood, so the fish died, and the water could not be drunk. 2. God covered Egypt with frogs. 3. God turned the dust of the earth into synths. Uh, Footnote, that's a small flying insect, very troublesome both to men and beasts, which came upon both man and beasts of Egypt, and that's found in Exodus chapter 8. God sent diverse kinds of flies on Egypt next. Number five, God sent a very grievous moraine, which is a pestilence, a plague, an infectious and fatal disease of cattle upon Egypt's animals, which are horses, asses, camels, oxen, and sheep, and they died, but none of Israel's died. That's Exodus 9. 
God brought dust upon Egypt and boils and swelling blains. That's a blister or a pustule, a small inflamed elevation of the skin containing pus, both in men and beasts. God sent hail, thunder, and lightning running along the ground on Egypt, which destroyed the flax, which was boiled, or bold, sorry. Um, the definition, the pot or capsule of a plant. And barley, which was green in the field, killed both man and beast, which stayed in the field and did not take shelter. The eighth, God brought locusts on Egypt, which ate all green things in the land. That's Exodus 10. God brings total darkness upon Egypt for three days, so no man could see his brother or leave his dwelling. That's Exodus 10 as well. God killed all the firstborn of man and beast in all the land of Egypt. And that's the final one. That's Exodus 11, as well as 12. Jumping to Exodus 12:12, 12, 12, and I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and will kill every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. Leviticus chapter 26, verses 14 through 42. But if you will not hear me, nor do all my commandments, if you despise my laws and condemn my judgments, so as not to do those things which are appointed by me, and to make void my covenant, I also will do these things to you. I will quickly visit you with poverty and burning heat, which shall waste your eyes and consume your lives. You shall sow your seed in vain, which shall be devoured by your enemies. I will set my face against you, and you shall fall down before your enemies, and shall be made subject to them that hate you. You shall flee when no man pursues you. But if you will not yet for all this obey me, I will chastise you seven times more for your sins. And I will break the pride of your stubbornness, or unwilling change. And I will make to you the heaven above as iron, and the earth as brass. Your labor shall be spent in vain. The ground shall not bring forth her increase, nor the trees yield their fruit. If you walk contrary to me, and will not hearken to me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you for your sins, and I will send in upon you the beasts of the field to destroy you and your cattle and make you few in number, and that your highways may be desolate. And if even so you will not amend, but will walk contrary to me, I also will walk contrary to you and will strike you seven times for your sins, and I will bring in upon you the sword that shall avenge my covenant. And when you shall flee into the cities, I will send the pestilence in the midst of you, and you shall be delivered into the hands of your enemies. After I shall have broken the staff of your bread, so that ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and give it out by weight, and you shall eat, and shall not be filled. But if you will not for all this hearken to me, but will walk against me, I will also go against you with opposite fury." And I will chastise you with seven plagues for your sins, so that you shall eat the flesh of your sons and of your daughters. That's also referencing 4 Kings chapter 6, verse 28. I will destroy your high places and break your idols. You shall fall among the ruins of your idols, and my soul, soul shall abhor you, or hate you, in so much that I will bring your cities to be a wilderness, and I will make your sanctuaries desolate and will receive no more of your sweet odors. And I will destroy your land, and your enemies shall be astonished at it, when they shall be the inhabitants thereof. And I will scatter you among the Gentiles, and I will draw out the sword after you, and your land shall be desert, and your cities destroyed. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths all the days of her desolation, when you shall be in the enemy's land, she shall keep a Sabbath and rest in the Sabbaths of her desolation, because she did not rest in your Sabbaths when you dwelt therein. And as to them that shall remain of you, I will send fear in their hearts, in the countries of their enemies. The sound of a flying leaf shall terrify them, and they shall flee as it were from the sword. They shall fall when no man pursues them, and they shall every one fall upon their brethren as fleeing from wars. None of you shall dare to resist your enemies. You shall perish among the Gentiles, and an enemy's land shall consume you. And if of them also some remain, they shall pine away in their iniquities in the land of their enemies, and they shall be afflicted for the sins of their fathers and their own. 
until they confess their iniquities and the iniquities of their ancestors, whereby they have transgressed against me and walk contrary unto me. Therefore, I also will walk against them and bring them into their enemy's land until their uncircumcised mind be ashamed. Then shall they pray for their sins, and I will remember my covenant that I made with Jacob and Isaac and Abraham. I will remember also the land. Um, this is a summary of Numbers 16, 30 through 35, basically an earthquake and fire. And then jumping to De uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1, 12, 15, and 15 through 68. Now, if you will hear the voice of the Lord your God to do and keep all his commandments, which I command you this day, the Lord your God will make you higher than all the nations that are on the earth. And you shall lend to many nations and shall not borrow of anyone. But if you will not hear the voice of the Lord your God to keep and do all his commandments and ceremonies, which I command you this day, all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city. Cursed in the field, cursed shall you be your barn, and cursed your stores, and cursed shall be the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of your ground, and the herds of your oxen, and the flocks of your sheep. Cursed shall you be coming in, and cursed going out. The Lord shall send upon you famine and hunger, and rebuke upon all the works which you shall do, until he consume and destroy you quickly for your most wicked inventions by which you have forsaken me. May the Lord set the pestilence upon you until he consume you out of the land, which you shall go in to possess. May the Lord afflict you with miserable want, with a fever and with cold or the chills, with burning and with heat and with corrupted air and with blasting, blasting wind that's found in Agius 2.18, and pursue you till you perish. Be the heaven that is over you, of brass, and the ground you tread on, of iron. The Lord give you dust for rain upon your land, and let ashes come down from heaven upon you, till you be consumed. The Lord make you to fall down before your enemies, one way, may you go out against them, and flee seven ways, and be scattered throughout all the kingdom of the earth, and be your carcass meat for all the fowls of the air, and the beasts of the earth, and be there none to drive them away. The Lord strike you with the ulcer of Egypt, and the part of your body by which the dung is cast out, with the scab and to the itch, and the itch, so that you cannot be healed. The Lord strike you with madness and blindness and fury of mind. And may you grope at midday as the blind is wont to grope in the dark and not make straight your ways, and make you at all times suffer wrong, and be oppressed with violence. And may you have no one to deliver you. May you take a wife, and another sleep with her. May you build a house, and not dwell therein. May you plant a vineyard, and not gather the vintage thereof. May your ox be slain before you, and you not eat thereof. May your ass be taken away in your sight, and not restored to you. May your sheep be given to your enemies, and may there be none to help you. May your sons and your daughters be given to another people, your eyes looking on, and languishing at the sight of them all the day. And may there be no strength in your hand. May a people, which you know not, eat the fruits of your land and all your labors. And may you always suffer oppression and be crushed at all times, and be astonished at the terror of those things which your eyes shall see. May the Lord strike you with a very sore ulcer in the knees and in the legs, and be you incurable from the sole of the foot to the top of the head. The Lord shall bring you and your king, whom you shall have appointed over you, and a nation which you and your fathers know not, and there you shall serve strange gods, wood and stone, and you shall be lost as a proverb and a byword to all people, among whom the Lord shall bring you in. You shall cast much seed into the ground and gather little, because the locusts shall consume all. You shall plant a vineyard and dig it, and shall not drink the wine, nor gather anything thereof, because it shall be wasted with worms. You shall have olive trees in all your borders, and shall not be anointed with the oil, for the olives shall fall off and perish. You shall beget sons and daughters, and shall not enjoy them, because they shall be led into captivity." 
The blast shall consume all the trees and the fruits of your ground. The stranger that lives with you in the land shall rise up over you and shall be higher, and you shall go down and be lower. He shall lend to you, and you shall not lend to him. He shall be as the head, and you shall be the tail. And all these curses shall come upon you, and shall pursue and overtake you till you perish. Because you heard not the voice of the Lord your God, and did not keep his commandments and ceremonies which he commanded you. And they shall be as signs and wonders on you, and on your seed forever. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart, the abundance of all things, you shall serve your enemy, whom the Lord will send upon you, in hunger, and thirst, and nakedness, and in want of all things, and he shall put an iron yoke upon your neck, till he consume you. The Lord will bring upon you a nation from afar, and from the uttermost ends of the earth, like an eagle that flies swiftly, whose tongue you cannot understand, a most insolent nation that will show no regard to the ancients, nor have pity on the infant, and will devour the fruit of your cattle and the fruits of your land until you be destroyed, and will leave you no wheat, nor wine, nor oil, nor herds of oxen, nor flocks of sheep, until he destroy you, and consume you in all your cities, and your strong and high walls be brought down, wherein you trusted in all your land, you shall be besieged within your gates in all your land which the Lord your God will give you. And you shall eat the fruit of your womb, and the flesh of your sons and of your daughters, which the Lord your God shall give you, in the distress and extremity wherewith your enemy shall oppress you. The man that is nice among you, and very delicate, shall envy his own brother, and his wife, that lies in his bosom, so that he will not give them of the flesh of his children, which he shall eat, because he has nothing else in the siege and the want, wherewith your enemy shall distress you within all your gates. The tender and delicate woman, that could not go upon the ground, nor set down her foot over much niceness and tenderness, will envy her husband who lies in her bosom, the flesh of her son and of her daughter. And the filth of the afterbirths that come forth from between her thighs, and the children that are born the same hour, for they shall eat them secretly, for the want of all things, in the siege and distress, wherewith your enemy shall oppress you within your gates. If you will not keep and fulfill all the words of this law that are written in this volume, and fear his glorious and terrible name that is, the Lord your God, the Lord shall increase your plagues, and the plagues of your seed, plagues great and lasting, infirmities, grievous and perpetual. And he shall bring back on you all the afflictions of Egypt, which you were afraid of, and they shall stick fast to you. Moreover, the Lord will bring upon you all the diseases and plagues that are not written in the volume of his law, till he consume you. And you shall remain few in number, who before were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because you heard not the voice of the Lord your God. And as the Lord rejoiced upon you before doing good to you and multiplying you, so he shall rejoice destroying and bringing you to naught, so that you shall be taken away from the land which you shall go in to possess. The Lord shall scatter you among all people, from the farthest parts of the earth to the ends thereof. And there you shall serve strange gods, which both you are ignorant of, and your fathers, wood and stone. Neither shall you be quiet, even in those nations. Nor shall there be any rest for the sole of your foot, for the Lord will give you a fearful heart, and languishing eyes, and a soul consumed with pensiveness, or thoughtful sadness. And your life shall be as it were hanging before you. You shall fear night and day, neither shall you trust your life. In the morning you shall say, Who will grant me evening? And at evening, who will grant me morning? For the fearfulness of your heart, wherewith you shall be terrified, and for those things which you shall see with your eyes, the Lord shall bring you again with ships into Egypt. By the way thereof he said to you, that you should see it no more. There shall you be set to sail to your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. 1 Kings 2.6, the Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to hell and brings back up again. 1 Kings 2.7, the Lord 
The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He humbles and he exalts. 1 Kings 2, 9. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, because no man shall prevail by his own strength. Romans 10, 15. And how are men to preach unless they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, of those who bring glad tidings of good things. It's Isaiah, referencing Isaiah 52, 7. 1 Kings 2, 10, the adversaries of the Lord shall fear him, and upon them shall he thunder in the heavens. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give empire to his king, and shall exalt the horn of his Christ. 3 Kings chapter 8, verse 32 through 47. Uh, this is a summary. Bring wicked's way upon his own head. No rain because of sins. Converted because of their aff- afflictions. Famine, pestilence, corrupt air, blasting, locusts, mildew. Enemies afflict them. Plague, infirmity, curse, captivity by enemy. That's a summary of 3 Kings 8, verses 32 to 47. 1 Paralipomenon, chapter 16, verse 14. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Referencing Psalm 104, 7. Judith, which if you don't have a um, Douay Reims Bible, this is part of what a lot of people consider the Apocrypha, but it is a, it's a great book if you haven't heard of it. For all your ways are prepared, and in your providence you have placed your judgments. Bring the pass, O Lord, that this, Holofernes, uh, the general of King Nebuchadnezzar's army, pride may be cut off with his own sword. Let him be caught in the net of his own eyes in my regard. And do you strike him by the graces of the words of my lips? And that's referring to Judith's great beauty. Um, same book, chapter 16, verse 20 and 21. Woe be to the nation that rises up against my people. For the Lord Almighty will take revenge on them in the day of judgment. He will visit them, for he will give fire and worms into their flesh, that they may burn and may feel forever. Job chapter 7 verse 14, You will frighten me with dreams and terrify me with visions. That's also referencing wisdom 18 verses 17 through 19. Job 10 verse 2, I will say to God, do not condemn me. Tell me why you judge me so. Job 21, verse 21. For what is it to him, the wicked? What befalls his house after him? And if the number of his months be diminished by one half. Proverbs 10, verse 27. The years of the wicked shall be shortened. Job 38, verses 22 and 23. Have you entered into the storehouses of the snow? Or have you beheld the treasures of the hail? which I have prepared for the time of the enemy against the day of battle and war. Psalm chapter 9, verse 6 through 9, as well as 17. You have rebuked the Gentiles, and the wicked one has perished. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. The swords of the enemy have failed unto the end, and their cities you have destroyed. Their memory has perished with a noise, but the Lord remains forever. He has prepared his throne in judgment, and he shall judge the world in equity. He shall judge the people in justice. The Lord shall be known when he executes judgments. The sinner has been caught in the works of his own hands. Psalm 9 verse 15. Break you the arm of the sinner and of the malignant. Psalm 36 17. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken in pieces. Psalm 33, 20, and 21. Many are the afflictions of the just, but out of them all will the Lord deliver them. The Lord keeps all their bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Psalm 52, verse 6. For God has scattered the bones of them that please men. They have been confounded because God has despised them. So God despises people that choose to try and please men instead of him. Psalm 57, 7, God shall break in pieces their teeth and their mouth. The Lord shall break the grinders of the lions. Psalm 57, verse 11 and 12, the just shall rejoice when he shall see the revenge. He shall wash his hands in the blood of the sinner 
and the man shall say, If indeed there be fruit to the just, there is indeed a God that judges them on the earth. So that means we need to learn from other sinners and wash our hands um, in their sin and learn from it. Psalm 67, 22, But God shall break the heads of his enemies, the hairy crown of them that walk on in their sins. Psalm 68, 23, Let their table become as a snare before them and a recompense and a stumbling block. Psalm 68, 24, let their eyes be darkened, that they see not. Psalm 72, 17 through 20. Until I go into the sanctuary of God and understand concerning their last ends, but indeed for deceits, you have put it to them. When they were lifted up to you, have cast them down. How are they brought to desolation? They have suddenly ceased to be. They have perished by reason of their iniquity, as the dream of them that awake. O Lord, so is your city, you shall bring their image to nothing. Psalm 81, 1, God has stood in the congregation of gods, and being in the midst of them, he judges gods. Psalm 88, 10, you rule the power of the sea, and appease the motion of the waves thereof. Psalm 88, verse 21, 31 through 33. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. And if his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they profane my justices and keep not my commandments, I will visit their iniquities with a rod and their sins with stripes. Psalm 103, verse 35. Let sinners be consumed out of the earth and the unjust so that they be no more. O my soul, bless you the Lord. Psalm 104, 7, He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Psalm 113, 4 through 8, Let them make them idols become like unto them, and all such as trust in them, because they don't speak, see, hear, smell, or feel, or walk. Psalm 118, 84, When will you execute judgment on them that persecute me? Psalm 128, 4, the Lord who is just will cut the necks of sinners. 128.6 Let them, or sinners, be as grass upon the tops of houses, which wither before it be plucked up. 146.6 The Lord lifts up the meek, and brings the wicked down even to the ground. 148.8 Fire, hail, snow, ice, stormy winds, which fulfill his word. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 15 to such a one his destruction shall presently come, and he shall suddenly be destroyed, and shall no longer have any remedy. Proverbs 10.24 That which the wicked fears shall come upon him, to the just their desire shall be given. Proverbs 12.5 The thoughts of the just are judgments, and the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. Proverbs 19.29 Judgments are, are prepared for scorners, and striking hammers for the bodies of fools. Wisdom, chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. But the children of adulterers shall not come to perfection, and the seed of the unlawful bed shall be rooted out. And if they live long, they shall be nothing regarded, and their last old age shall be without honor. And if they die quickly, they shall have no hope, nor speech of comfort in the day of trial. For dreadful are the ends of a wicked race. Wisdom chapter 4, verses 3 and 6. But the multiplied brood of the wicked shall not thrive, and bastard or illegitimate children, slips or mistakes, shall not take deep root, nor any fast foundation. For the children that are born of unlawful beds are witnesses of wickedness against their parents in their trial. Wisdom chapter 4, verse 7. 11, 13, 14, and 17. But the just man, if he be prevented with death, shall be in rest. He was taken away, lest wickedness should alter his understanding or deceit, beguile his soul, being made perfect in a short space. He fulfilled a long time. For his soul pleased God. Therefore, he hastened to bring him out of the midst of iniquities. For the people see this, and understand not, nor lay up such things in their hearts. For they shall see 
the end of the wise man and shall not understand what God has designed for him and why the Lord has set him in safety. They shall see him and shall despise him, but the Lord shall laugh them to scorn. And they, the wicked, shall fall after this without honor and be a reproach among the dead forever. For he, or God, shall burst, suddenly render, them puffed up and speechless, and shall shake them from the foundations. And they shall be utterly waste, they shall be in sorrow, and their memory shall perish. Wisdom 12, 1 through, uh, 27 summary, God chastises by little and little them that err, that leaving wickedness, they may believe in him. Wisdom 16, 18, they, or the Egyptians, were persecuted by the judgment of God. Ecclesiasticus 3.27, A hard, or cruel, or pitiless heart shall fear evil at the last, and he that loves danger shall perish in it. Ecclesiasticus 5, verses 4 through 10, Say not I have sinned, and what harm has befallen me, for the Most High is a patient rewarder. Be not without fear about sin forgiven, and add not sin upon sin, and say not, The mercy of the Lord is great. He will have mercy on the multitude of my sins. For mercy and wrath quickly come from him, and his wrath looks upon sinners. Delay not to be converted to the Lord, and defer it not from day to day. For his wrath shall come on a sudden, and in the time of vengeance he will destroy you. Be not anxious for goods unjustly gotten, for they shall not profit you, in the day of calamity and revenge. Ecclesiasticus 16, verse 13. According as his mercy is, so his correction judges a man according to his works. Ecclesiasticus 21, 11, The way of sinners is made plain with stones, and in their end in hell or the grave in darkness and pains. Ecclesiasticus 25, 32, Feeble hands and disjointed knees, a woman that does not make her husband happy. 27.4. Unless you hold yourself diligently in the fear of the Lord, your house shall quickly be overthrown. 27.6. The furnace tries the potter's vessels, and the trial of affliction just men. 38.15. He that sins in the sight of his maker shall fall into the hands of the physician. 39 verses 33 to 37, there are spirits that are created for vengeance, and in their fury that lay on grievous torments. In the time of destruction they shall pour out their force, and they shall appease the wrath of him that made them, fire, hail, famine, and death. All these were created for vengeance, the teeth of beasts and scorpions, and serpents, and the sword taking vengeance upon the ungodly unto destruction. In his commandments they shall feast, and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. Referencing Deuteronomy 32, verses 23 through 25. Ecclesiasticus 40, verse 4, as well as 8 through 10. Wrath, envy, trouble, unquietness, or agitation, and the fear of death, continual anger, and strife. Such things happen to all flesh, for man even to beast, and upon sinners are sevenfold more. Moreover, death and bloodshed, strife and sword, oppressions, famine, and affliction, and scourges, all these things are created for the wicked, and for their sakes came the flood. So as you can see, God is most definitely going to judge the world, and he's going to judge the world based on our faith, which is shown, our true faith, by our works. So, this is part one of a two-part series for judgment. Um, as you can see, I got through a little more than half, or actually a lot more than half of this. But um, in the end, it's going to be a lot more broken up, but I'm also going to speak more freely afterwards, so it's probably going to be about the same time. Um, otherwise, I hope you truly consider um, that God's judgment is coming soon, and we need to not delay in our, con uh, in our conversion. So, I ask you to... Consider being baptized if you haven't. Consider um, repenting and changing your lives because time before Jesus' return is becoming less and less. And um, we need to remember it is no time to delay. And the best time is now. God bless you and have a good night.